Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Pamela. I am a licensed esthetician specializing in the treatment of acne and multicultural skin concerns. And sometimes I do like to talk about makeup. Now, if you've seen some of my makeup or beauty related videos before, you may or may not know that I've been quite a big fan of Glossier for a few years now. <laughs> so I've got a pretty good feel for what I think is good and the products that I do recommend and the products that I think you can pass on. So let's go through all the products that are at Glossier and Sephora. I have multiple dedicated videos to reviewing Glossier specifically, which will be found in this playlist linked in the card right here. This video is just gonna be kind of a general overview I just have the products pulled up here on my phone. Some of the products that I have not tried yet are the Priming Moisturizer Rich, although I do think I would like that. The Universal Pro Retinol, the Priming Moisturizer Balance, which is more geared for oily skin type. The Solution, which is a chemical exfoliator. There are two serums, the Super Pure with Niacinamide and Zinc, and the Super Glow with Vitamin C and Magnesium and the Mega Greens Detoxifying Mask, which is not available at Sephora, but I haven't tried out that mask either. Everything else for skincare, I have tried. So let's just start off with skincare first, shall we? Now, many people have expressed that they feel Glossier Skincare Line is for people that don't really have any complications with their skincare routine or with their skin. I would pretty much agree with that sentiment. <laughs> I think a lot of their skincare products to me, and I guess a lot of their products in general, do seem to be more catered towards teens or like a younger crowd, especially with their skincare line. Let's begin with the skincare products that I think you can pass on. Starting with the Milky Jelly Cleanser. It's not my favorite. Um, like I said, I do have a dedicated video where I go more in depth and I do give product demos. So that video will be linked right here if you want to check that out after this one. But yeah, for a water-based cleanser, I just don't find that it does the job it's supposed to, which is cleanse the skin. I personally don't like it at all. There's there's really no way to sugarcoat this. Um, I do consider myself, I guess, somewhat of an expert in the skincare field. I certainly know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And if you like it, I love it, honestly. But this product, I just, <laughs> I just don't. It leaves a kind of weird consistency on the skin and I feel like after I cleanse with this, I need to use another cleanser to wash off that cleanser. I do think that it's pretty good at removing makeup though, especially mascara, but I just think that there are so many better cleansers out there. Let me plug a couple of my favorites. <laughs> Crave Beauty Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. Fantastic. There's another one I've been using too at Sephora, the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Foaming Oil Cleanser. That's been my go-to lately. It's fantastic. There's also the Round Lab Mugwort Calming Cleanser. Love that one too. I mean, y'all, like, check out some of my other skincare videos, my recommendations. There are so many other better cleansers in my opinion. Overall, you do want to focus on a cleanser that is hydrating, that's gentle, that's non-stripping, regardless of skin type. A lot of foaming cleansers on the market do tend to be a little bit stripping, so you want to run away from that feeling. Dehydration is the enemy. You don't want to use anything that is stripping or leaves your skin feeling tight after a squeaky clean. That's not good. This cleanser does not do that, but personally, I just don't like the texture as a cleanser, I just, it's just not my favorite. I, there's no other way to say it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Moving on, I'll just quickly mention the Moisturizing Moon Mask. It's not available at Sephora, but I think you could skip it too. <laughs> It very superficially hydrates the skin, but when it's time to wash away the mask, the moisture is also washed away with it. So personally, I just don't really feel like it does much of anything. She's cute, but yeah, not my favorite. Now the cleanser concentrate. I'm sorry, I did not mention my skin type or anything about my skincare journey. My skin type is dry, it is slightly sensitive, and I do have hormonal acne, which I do have a dedicated routine with some prescription products and mostly Korean skincare that I used to kind of keep that at bay. That's my routine for right now. I might be switching soon, so stay tuned for that in the future. But I have tried the cleanser concentrate. I was really excited about it because personally, I love Glossier's packaging. It is so attractive to me visually. It makes me excited to do my skincare routine. And I loved the feel of this cleanser, the glass bottle, the color. But when it came down to putting it on my skin, my skin is slightly sensitive. I say this because for the most part, my skin can handle a lot of things. It does get a bit irritated at fragrance, but I can still rock with fragrance in my routine. My skin just doesn't love it. You know, it gets a little tingly, irritated. And for whatever reason, this cleanser was just 
too harsh on my skin my skin kind of stung it was tingling it was burning it was I had to wash it off immediately so I do think that if you have sensitive skin even if it's slightly sensitive skip this cleanser this cleanser is also better suited for more of an oily or combination skin type but again as I've listed before I do think that there are just better cleansing options out there so these aren't necessarily my favorites packaging's hella cute though now we have the Priming Moisturizer. Now this one lies in between the Priming Moisturizer Balance, which is for oily skin, and then the Priming Moisturizer Rich, which is more suited for dry or normal skin. The Priming Moisturizer's main purpose is to be a Priming Moisturizer for underneath makeup, and I do think that it excels at that. However, like I said, as someone with dry skin, it's just not, it's just not moisturizing enough for me personally. I do think maybe if you have combination or normal skin type, you may get away with using this product and find it in enjoyable. It's not a bad product, but I think that if we're going for skincare, this is something that I feel very passionately about, so I just think that there are better skincare options out there from a skincare focused brand. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's not its not bad at all. It's not bad at all. It's a little small for $24. Also, Glossier did up their prices recently. Everything went up like a dollar or two. So it's 1.7 ounces for $24. And to me, it's just, it's okay, it's cute. It's definitely cute, but yeah. I, I just think cute is the best word to describe that moisturizer. Just cute. If your skincare routine is just for makeup prep, then I think you can get away with maybe some Glossier products. But if you have a specific skin concern and you're looking for your skincare routine to actually yield results, I don't necessarily think that Glossier is the brand to look at for skincare. I think that there are so many other skincare brands that with a dedicated routine and with patience and with using the products correctly, your skin will actually see results. So if you just want something that's cute, you just want to get your little skincare routine for the aesthetic, you know, it's not necessarily for results, yeah, try out Glossier. I feel like that's so shady, but there are products that I like. We'll get into it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of their daily sunscreen, the Invisible Shield. I love that it is in a serum formula. It's ridiculously hydrating. My thing is, it's super, super tiny. And when I was testing out this product last year, it was the only sunscreen I was using consistently and reapplying with, and I finished the product in less than two weeks. You know, when people are using the right amount of product, because it's more than just one pump, <laughs> and when people are using the correct amount of product for their entire face and they're reapplying it, you go through the bottle so quickly. And it costs $25 for, is it one ounce or 1.6 ounces? It's, it's very small. It's a cute container, very travel friendly. But I would, if you want to get this sunscreen, I would recommend having another one, maybe that you use at home or something first, and then using this one, like bringing it with you to reapply, or maybe this is just a vacation sunscreen when you're traveling, because it is very compact, it's very travel friendly. But as your primary sunscreen, I just think you're gonna end up using so much of the product so quickly. So, let me plug some of my other favorite sunscreens. We have the Crave Beauty Beat the Shield Sun with SPF 40. I've been using that sunscreen nonstop for the last like month and a half, it's my go-to. As you can see, I'm a big fan of Crave Beauty, and if you haven't heard of the brand, definitely check them out they're absolutely fantastic. Another sunscreen I love is the Isntree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sunstick. That is fantastic for reapplication. Oh my gosh, it makes it so easy. The Skin Aqua UV Moisture Balance, I think it's like SPF 40 plus. These are all really nice, they're lightweight, and they are gonna give your skin sort of that dewy glow. So yeah, I do like this sunscreen, I just think you run out of it pretty quickly. Now this moisturizer is very specific. As we've gone over, the Priming Moisturizer Balance is better for oily combination skin. The Priming Moisturizer is best for normal to combination skin. The Priming Moisturizer Rich is best for normal to dry skin. And then the After Balm is best for really dry skin, especially if it's sensitive. I have been using Tretinoin for over a year now, along with clindamycin, which is another prescription antibiotic, and they do make your skin extremely dry. They're both to treat acne. At least that's what I use it for. Tretinoin also treats other things. So already having dry skin and then using drying products on top of that, my skin constantly felt like I had on a perpetual clay mask. It was so uncomfortable. The After Balm is really, really rich, and I would love using this along with Tretinoin because it did keep my skin feeling normal, feeling comfortable overnight. I didn't wake up with that clay mask feeling. So if you are using really drying actives or prescription products, I do think that this would be a great moisturizing option for you. 
I know some people who are also swimmers that spend a lot of time in chlorine it also kind of dries out their skin they do like this product as well so either way if you just find that your skin is extremely dry <laughs> like to a point where it's uncomfortable I do think this could be a good moisturizer for you especially overnight it is a little bit heavy to wear throughout the day but if you want to do that totally up to you Another skincare product that I actually really like from the brand is the Super Bounce Hyaluronic Acid Serum and Vitamin B5. Now, hyaluronic acid and vitamin B5, aka panthenol, are both humectants, which means that they are going to attract and lock in moisture to the skin. They both need a source of hydration to pull from. If you're in a humid environment, then it will take moisture out of the air and bring that into your skin. But if the air around you is dry, then it will actually end up pulling moisture out of your skin and attracting it to the product, which makes your skin dry. So, you just want to make sure that you are applying these products onto wet skin whenever something is hydrating i do recommend applying it onto wet skin just in general again with using super drying active ingredients retinols i was loving using the after bomb and i did accompany that with the super bound serum i found that the combination of both of them together left my skin feeling really comfortable throughout the night into the morning and i think that's kind of hard to do because i've used products that did not do the job of keeping my skin moisturized throughout the night. So if you're looking for hydration, which pro tip everyone should be looking for in their skincare routine, I think it's a really great serum to try out. It is $29 for one ounce though, so it's a little bit pricier. <laughs> and if you're just looking for a sort of basic hyaluronic acid serum, then I would recommend the one from the Inky List because it's under $10 for the same amount of product. Okay, so my last skincare product from Glossier is the Milky Oil Makeup Remover. Fantastic especially at removing really stubborn mascara. I still use that product to this day. I really save it exclusively for removing stubborn mascara. I do like to wear lash extensions at home, and when it comes time to remove them, I know that I can always rely on the Milky Oil Cleanser to do the job without irritating my eyes. Not necessarily, okay, it does sting if it gets in your eyes a little bit, not gonna lie, but it's not going to, to damage your eye area in terms of like wrinkling and pulling and stuff. All you need to do is soak a cotton pad leave it over the eye for a couple seconds and then just wipe away and it's really easy like it removes mascara like no other it is so so good you can certainly use it throughout your face but because it's only yeah it's three ounces because the product is rather small i don't like to waste it on the rest of my face so typically i'll go in with a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil to remove my makeup if you want to know some of my recommendations for a makeup remover i I am obsessed <laughs> with the Kosi Speedy Cleansing Oil. Oh my gosh, Speedy, yes it is, yes it is. I've talked about that product a couple times, fantastic. Fantastic, also really good at removing mascara. And that product is like $11 or $13 too. So it's cheaper, you get way more and it lasts much longer in my opinion. So I do think the milky oil is pretty travel friendly and again it's fantastic at removing mascara so those are all the skincare products we went through them pretty quickly okay so for makeup this i actually have tried i think every makeup product <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> and again i'm going to break this down into i'm actually going to break the makeup down into four categories so the first one we're going to start off with is products that i just didn't like they didn't work for me or i don't necessarily recommend then we're going to move into products that are meh they're not, they're not bad, they're not terrible, but they didn't impress me, they didn't leave an impression on me. Then we're going to go into products that are good, but not great. They're, you know, if you like it, I love it. I definitely don't hate the products, but I don't know that I would necessarily always repurchase, or I think that there are substitutes out there that might be better, but they're good. And then we're gonna get into my core essentials. These are the products that it's been years later and I'm still only using this product. Like I trust Glossier with this specifically. As some of you know, when Glossier started out, they were kind of the pioneers, I guess, for that no makeup makeup look. They're one of the first brands to really switch the tone for the beauty industry. Because at the time it was all, it was lipsticks, it was full coverage everything, it was really mad. It wasn't what we see today. But now since it has been 10 years, or something it's been many many years later there are plenty of brands that have duped the concept and maybe improved upon what glossier started so some of my other favorite like no makeup makeup brands are kosas merit beauty a lot of korean makeup shout out to korea <laughs> they really know what they're doing over there <laughs> 
Rare Beauty is really popular and kind of has a similar a similar target audience. So, all right, here we go. <laughs> These are the products that I didn't like or they just didn't work for me. Starting off with the brow flip. You know, again, if you like it, I love it. I know that there are certain people that really do enjoy this product, but to me, there was a bit of a learning curve and I just didn't feel like learning it. Or maybe I just couldn't grasp it. But when I tried out this product, I think I gave up after like a day or two and just returned it. I can appreciate how precise the brow strokes were, but when I did it, it was just kind of overdo I don't know it was just giving like I filled in my eyebrows with a really fine tip sharpie yeah <laughs> and I was already using another one of their brow products that I loved a lot so it was just another extra step that I didn't really feel like doing in terms of application, I think it was fine, but again, there is a learning curve with that product. It's not as user-friendly as some of their other options, and I do think that a brow pencil probably would have been more suitable for this audience specifically because a lot of Glossy's makeup products are very beginner-friendly. And unfortunately, this one just wasn't for me. Like I said, I returned it very quickly. And I gave it to someone else, and I hope that they are enjoying the product. Now, another product, and for whatever reason, this is not available on the Sephora website, is the Wowder. That's their setting powder. Another product that I returned immediately. <laughs> now, one of the difficulties with Glossier mostly being online, they do have a couple brick and mortar stores before they were available in Sephora, was not knowing what shade you are. I guess you can get away with it because of how sheer the products are, but there are shades that are gonna be a better match for you, you know? And throughout the years, I started off as G6, then last year I was G7, and this year I realized G8 is the best fit for me. So <laughs> I say that because the Wowders are available in I believe five different powder shades, and they do they do cater to a range of, of shades. So one will be like G5 to G7 can use this specific powder. Now the issue with that I found is if you were on the lighter end and you were using that powder, it's, it darkens your foundation. Yeah, when I was first using this, I remember applying it and it looked so muddy right in that spot and I blended it all out and it just made my entire face a shade darker. It made my foundation a shade darker and it just looked obviously awkward. <laughs> so maybe if you wanna try it, I would recommend going for a lighter shade, like the, the next shade up. Or if you are on the, the, darker side of the spectrum of that particular shade if that makes sense so like if it's g5 to g7 if you are g5 you you'll probably be okay with using that powder it shouldn't darken the skin but if you're g7 which is the lighter shade in this range it might look darker on you it might look kind of muddy does that make sense so yeah regardless i just don't think that powder should be doing that <laughs> If you want to know one of my powder alternatives, one that I absolutely love is the Kosas Cloud Set. That powder is fantastic. As someone with dry skin, I just don't really like putting powders on my face because they do feel kind of tight. They adhere to flaky dry patches, so I try to stay away from powders, but the Kosas Cloud Set, it's super, super lightweight. It's gonna set your makeup in place without removing the glow or the dew. I do have it on today, and as you can see, my skin is still reflective. The light is still bouncing off of it quite nicely, but everything is set in place. It's not visibly shiny. So yeah, I just think that there are other powders out there, but for like I said, for whatever reason, it's not available on Sephora maybe it's just not a best-selling product for them so they didn't put it there I don't know either way I don't like it and I think you can skip it another product that is just eh, eh, is the halo scope to me Glossier as a brand is quite dewy it's quite um, sheer and natural, yes, but it's gonna give your skin a glow. So if I'm already using Glossier products, I just don't think that Halo Scope is necessary. Um, I didn't particularly like the texture of it, the balminess. I find that when you're using a product like that on top of already sheer makeup, it's just kind of removing what you put there when you're like spreading a stick on top of it. And it, like I said, it just wasn't necessary. If I was going to use a highlighter specifically from Glossier, I would reach for Future Do instead. So I just, again, if you like any of these products, I love that for you. I really, really do. Don't let me stop you. But if you're trying it out for the first time, I just don't, yeah, I just don't, I just don't really think it's necessary. Okay, so let's move into products that are 
meh. The products that were, they were all right, but they just didn't really leave an impression on me. Definitely not enough to repurchase or to use again. Okay, so first up we have the Pro Tip Liquid Eyeliner. It was, it was fine, it was okay. Um, it wasn't overly pigmented, the color was black, and it was giving more of like a graphite pencil. You know what I mean? It was giving black in that sense. Charcoal. <laughs> the black just wasn't, it wasn't giving. It wasn't giving what I expected from a liquid eyeliner. And the product dried out rather quickly. Like it was, it was cute while it lasted, but the issue was that it just didn't last very long, so... Again, if you like it, I love it, but to be honest, I didn't love it. <laughs> yeah, just mm. The next product is their number one pencil eyeliner. It was fine. I don't really have any complaints about it. It just didn't really leave an impression on me. To be honest, I was a little surprised that this was a newer launch from them, especially because once upon a time they did have Glossier Play, where they release colored eyeliner pencil, so it's Interesting that they brought that back again, and I feel like right now in 2023, even in the last couple years, people have just been innovating. They've been coming out with new things. People have constantly been, I mean, some things have been done and continue to just be done and tired, but some people are are approaching things differently. They're approaching the, the same concept differently. They're at least trying to switch it up a little bit. So I was surprised that a pencil eyeliner was a newer launch from the brand. Again, I I have it. I like it. It's fine, you know? <laughs> it's cool. It's good. It's not bad, but it's it's a pencil eyeliner. Yeah? <laughs> All right. Okay, next up in meh, this is a product I've reviewed, but after the review, it's not that I changed my mind. It's just that my preference has changed. We have the Monochromes palette. I think it's super duper cute. Um, I just personally haven't been wearing eyeshadow lately, so I just don't find that I reach for them. And the more that I thought about it, as much as I know Glossier is known for sheer and really lightweight coverage, I'm like, hmm, I just want more out of an eyeshadow, even if it is, even if it's gonna be subtle, even if it's gonna be a really light look. I just need a bit more and I think that if the monochromes were slightly more pigmented not to say that they have to be like swatch videos where they just do one wipe and then it's like super bold pigment it's not to say that it has to be that but I think just a little bit more than what it was giving. I feel like people who like the no makeup makeup look aren't really wearing eyeshadow. Maybe that's just I know it's not just me. I'm trying to think, I just feel like a lot of people haven't really been wearing eyeshadow as much as they used to, you know? It's cute, it's sheer. To be honest with you, I would get it for the packaging because I really like how compact it is, the mirror. It's also removable, you can take out the mirror and you can take out the palette, which I have done. <laughs> I've taken out the, the eyeshadow and I just keep the container and I like put other things in it. I wish that they sold the compact without the eyeshadow as an option too because I would tell y'all to get that. <laughs> yeah, I have a dedicated review to the Monochromes palette if you want more information on it because it's not it's not bad. I think yeah, it's just over time my preference just changed and I don't really reach for it like I thought I would. That's all. If you know that you like eyeshadow like that, but I guess you don't really like eyeshadow like that because you want a really sheer one from Gloss. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll let y'all decide. <laughs> this is in the shade Almond. Let's get some swatches. It's not bad. It's buttery. I think the shimmer and the satin certainly stand out more. Okay, I take it back. The quality is decent. It's decent, but I still stand by what I said about my preferences just changing. I think that's I think that's all it is for this. But she's cute, I guess. Yeah. Also, I feel like if you want something that's a sort of sheer eyeshadow, but it's giving you something, try Korean makeup. Oh my gosh. Get into that. Yeah. I don't know what I don't remember what palette it is, but I'll have it linked below. And it's beautiful. It's I feel like it's doing what Glossier wants to do or like thinks they're doing but it's just doing it so much better so check out that palette okay another product that's just meh to me and this is interesting because this product went viral and i know people obviously really like it i guess but for me it just wasn't it's okay it's okay it's the you perfume the eau de parfum <laughs> i just don't really like the smell of it 
and I don't <laughs> sorry and I don't know how to describe the smell of it either it's uh, warm and spicy and um, has key notes of pink pepper iris and ab abrox abro a bro it's not bad it doesn't stink like I still wear it I still put it on but it's not it's not like my other perfumes that I like so to each their own okay now let's get into the products that are good but they're not great these are products that I would definitely recommend to someone that already likes Glossier like I wouldn't just recommend these to anyone who's maybe trying the brand for the first time. These are for the dedicated fans. So first up is the Sky Wash. This is a liquid to powder sheer matte eyeshadow tint. And I think with this product, it depends on which shade you get. I have the shade Terra, which is like a terracotta. And this, I actually, I really like the texture of this. It is so, it's like velvety. Oh, yo, if they had this in a, like a lipstick formula, Matter of fact, I'm sure you could just use this as a lipstick. Ooh, velvet. It is so nice. It's so soft. It's so, and then when you blend it out, it is, you know, it's a Glossier product, so it's gonna sheer out. That's what it was meant to do. Check it out, check it out, check it out. And it does look like, when I've worn this before, I really like it. I think, again, I just haven't really been reaching for eyeshadows lately, so it doesn't get much use. But I do think it also depends on the color that you get because the shade Pebble. I wish Pebble was a bit more pigmented because that one you have to layer up. Yeah. I think it's, it's a nice concept though, but they just sheer out a little too much. Okay, another product. I like it. It's good. Waiting for it to be great. It's the Solar Paint. I do have a review that is on my Glossier playlist. And in that video, I was not using the most flattering shade for myself. I think I got heat and I should have been using, yeah, and I should have been using Ray. And I think that this is more flattering. I do like it. I just think it's also, it depends, you know, if you're someone that reaches for a bronzer, especially during the summertime, and you like a liquid bronzer that's subtle, yeah. I think this would be the product for you. I just don't think that it is the product for everyone. You know, the the shade range is interesting. I wish I wish that the bronzer is veered a bit more golden and less red as they started getting deeper. It's like it's cute though. I mean, it, it worked, I guess. It's just it's cool. Like I'm just not overly impressed by it, but I do think that there is certainly a market for people that like this particular bronzer. I feel like this video is kind of catering towards my personal preference, but I'm trying to think of people as a whole. If I'm recommending a product, I want to recommend something that I know will be fairly universally well received. Or if they're brand new to the brand and they want to try something out, I want to recommend them like the best of the best, my favorite products that I really think will work for them too. So that's, we'll get into that with the, the essentials. I don't think there's anything really wrong with these products. I would just recommend these for people who are already a fan of the brand. So they kind of know what to expect from Glossier. Does that make sense? Okay, next up we have another product that I like, but I just don't really reach for it very often is the lid star this is the shade lilac this was the first shade that i got actually really pretty yeah it's super cute sometimes it gets a little patchy it, it shears out but you can still see the the reflection it is buildable as well so we can go ahead and throw on another layer of this it is really pretty it's giving this like iridescent almost like a duochrome and they have beautiful shades of this too but again it's like i just don't want people to waste their money if they're um just trying out a product for the hype but i guess if i was watching a video i would just want someone to be like kind of honest with me and help me save my money and i think you have to already like and actively use liquid eyeshadows to use this product otherwise it's going to be one of those that you just you know once in a while use until you eventually forget about it and then find it like two years later in your drawer in the back and you're like oh i remember this you know you know what i mean i just want y'all if you're gonna spend your money i want it to be on something that you'll at least try and finish the bottle and then if you don't like it you know you switch over to something else but it's a product that you can keep using Okay, next up is a product that I like, but I just don't think it's necessary. And that's Future Dew. Future Dew gives you the effect of skincare in one bottle. So you put this on and it looks like you've just done your skincare routine, right? 
but I'm like, <laughs> why don't you just do your skincare routine? You know, I'm, I'm an esthetician, like skincare is, is very important to me. I would just so much rather encourage people to do a skincare routine, one that yields results, one that will have their skin naturally glowing because it's so hydrated and encourage people to wear their sunscreen every day. And I've done comparison videos with this product and sunscreen. If you're using a dewy sunscreen, it's, it's giving the same effect. I like, I wanna like this product so bad and I do like it. I just don't think it's, I just don't think it's really necessary. Honestly, she's cute though. Just not, just not an essential. Mm -mm. But as I mentioned before, comparing this to the Halo Scope, if I was using a highlighter, I would love to take this and just like kind of tap it over and it gives your skin that really beautiful, like super, super dewy glass skin look for sure. I just feel like there's other products out there that can do that for you too. That will actually benefit your skin as well. This is a serum and makeup hybrid. To me, it teeters more on the makeup side. Like this is similar to the Glow Recipe Niacinamide Dew Drops, which is also a makeup skincare hybrid. But to me, that product is more skincare than it is makeup. This one is like, eh, it's a little, it's a little more makeup than it is real skincare serum yeah to me this product just makes you look like you did your skincare routine and i'm like oh, just do your skincare routine <laughs> again these are still in the same category it's good i'm waiting for it to be great these are products these are two products that i really do like and personally for me i just don't have them in my core essentials because i know that they're not going to be for everyone or even for like most people like the complaints that people have about these products are valid so that's why I'm holding them back from my essentials. And that is the Perfecting Skin Tint. This product is probably their most infamous for certain. <laughs> it is truly infamously sheer, infamous. People like, you know, when this product was first coming out, there were some people that liked it. it this product got a lot of criticism for certain for being like a foundation that did nothing. It didn't cover anything. But it was, it was a pioneer, you know, it was starting something new. My issue with this product mostly is just the price point. Right now it is $26 for this. I would think, I think it could be maybe 18. Um, I still think that's a little bit pricey, but if it was $18, I could at least justify it a little bit more. But 26 is kind of, no. I just, mm -mm, mm -mm. I guess some of my preferences really have changed because back in the day I was like all about this and I'm like, yeah, I'll pay. Now that I've tried a lot more makeup brands and other foundations that are more than an ounce, by the way, and offer much more coverage, but that's still natural. I'm like, hmm, this, it's just not, it's just not comparing. It's not stacking up to the competition. But I do love the the glow that this gives. It is really, really beautiful on the skin. Again, this is a product, not just that you have to have clear skin or no problems to use it because I think you should just use the makeup that you wanna use. You can get a little bit of coverage out of this if you do two layers, but again, then you're using more product and you know, to each their own. I just don't really find myself reaching for this anymore. Put some over here. Because now I just spot conceal. It's way quicker. Matter of fact, honestly, I can't even see where I put the product, to be honest. <laughs> it, it'll give your skin a nice, healthy glow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it was cheaper, maybe I could justify it. But again, in this day and age, there's just so much more competition than there was when Glossier was first coming out. And I think that there are other brands who have taken the skin tint concept or even um, just a really lightweight foundation concept and have done it a bit. I just think that they've improved upon it, you know? So, yeah. I still like it though. I'll, I still like it. Okay, the next product, and this is the last product for the, it's good, you're good, I'm waiting for you to be great, is the Lash Slick. Now, again, I've talked about this product before and I do like it. I do still reach for this mascara, especially for the lower lashes because I don't like when it looks too clumpy on the bottom. This mascara is gorgeous. It is a lengthening mascara. So she's gonna give you length. She's not gonna give you volume. She's not gonna give you thickness. I've heard, I think it was Jackie Ina say this like back in the day, that there are certain products that you just shouldn't be spending over a certain amount of money for because at the end of the day, they're like kind of all the same. And she had said that it was mascara was one of them like just use drugstore there isn't really a need to use 
prestige mascara is above a certain price point. So ever since she said that, I'm like, eh. I've, like, I've always just kind of kept that in the back of my head somewhere. They did recently also expand into a brown shade. It's about time. I was waiting for them to do this for years because they just, it just seems like that's something that the brand would have done already. One of my issues with this product, however, it dries out very quickly. It dries out in about a month. So with this, I do tend to take eye drops and I'll drop a couple into the tube and that re- lubricates it but also and i know a lot of people don't do this you should be throwing out and replacing your mascara like every three months because it's a dark moist place it is the perfect ground for bacteria to grow you know then you're also taking this product and putting it by your eyes you do just want to make sure that you're constantly replacing your mascaras with new ones every couple months as i've stated my preference has also changed because i do now like to just wear diy lash extensions it because mascara just takes too long to apply for me personally but lash slick is cute she's for a very very specific audience that likes the look of mascara that doesn't look like mascara. You know what I mean? When they get too clumpy or they just look too odd. It looks like you're very obviously wearing makeup, at least other makeup wearers. This mascara isn't gonna look like that and that is its pro. But it does dry out too quickly. I don't know what's up with that. I don't like that. And here we go. We have saved the best for last. These are the products that years later years later i'm still reaching for these are the products that despite the competing brands i'm still coming back specifically to glossier for this right here is what's worth the hype in my opinion so without further ado let's jump into the best of the best this is one that did not used to be a core essential for me but over the years it has become a staple and that that's the bomb.com when i first got this everybody was hyping up this product and i used it i'm like it's it's just lip balm right <laughs> <laughs> After making so much content around Glossier, they eventually reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, thanks for supporting us so much. We're sending you some products. And they sent me a lot of the bomb.com. So for the last like almost year, I have had these scattered out. I have one in every purse. I have two by my nightstand. I have one in the bathroom. I have one that I keep in my car. Like I have them everywhere. And I think they got me addicted. Yeah, I'm just now so used to always reaching for a bomb.com. I can't see myself using like, even after I've run out of all of them, I'll still go back and, and buy this. It is a little bit expensive. It, it used to be $12. Okay, they're $14 now. And they did change the packaging. I still have the original, which has the little like flat paint, you know, style. Now they have a, a little, what is that thing called? Like a little lippy applicator. Oh, and I also heard that they reformulated this, I think. I believe, I was watching Khaki reviews. Shout out to Khaki. If you want someone who's like really, really, really in depth, super detailed reviews, is gonna talk about everything and give such intelligent and well thought out opinion. Shout out to Khaki. Her reviews are fantastic. She is the one that brought to my attention that I believe they made this product vegan now, so it does doesn't have beeswax and lanolin. I have not tried the updated formula, but she had mentioned how much it really changed how well the product worked in terms of like long lasting moisture on the lips. Unfortunately, I can't attest to that because I have not tried the updated version. So I don't know if this product will stay in my core essentials, but the old formula definitely was. Yikes. <laughs> This is the first product that I've ever purchased from Glossier back in maybe like 2016 or something. It's been years and I'm still going back rebuying the stretch concealer. If you're new to Glossier, you don't know where to start. You're a little skeptical of the sheer makeup, but you know, maybe you wanna try it. I think the stretch concealer is a fantastic place to start, especially if you do have a drier skin type. I do know people who have an oily skin type or combination skin type and they still like to use it, but I do think that Glossier is a bit better suited for drier skin types or at least those that like the do on their skin. This product is very emollient, meaning it does contain oils. It's a bit more moisturizing. It's a bit like creamier, but unlike the perfecting skin tint, this one is going to give you a bit of coverage. I actually like to spot conceal with this product. Sometimes I'll just use it all over my face. And to me, it does become like a, like a really lightweight foundation. It is buildable. So with a couple layers, very, very light layers, you can cover certain pigmentations. I think it depends on the depth of the hyperpigmentation as well. 
well but i can cover up my post-inflammatory erythema which is those like red spots after an acne breakout and i really just think that this is a pretty good universal product if you want a concealer that is actually going to do if you want makeup from glossier that's actually going to do something like this <laughs> This is a good one to start with. My favorite part about this concealer is that it just looks like skin at the end of it. I feel like I've talked about this product to death. I've mentioned it in like every single glossy video. But I love it. I definitely do recommend. It's a favorite. Okay, next up we have the Glossier Boy Brow. Uh, she's, she's a little toe up, not gonna lie. That's one thing about this particular product compared to the rest. The logo really fades on this. It's not a big deal, but like on everything else it pretty much stays. But this boy brow was another one of the first products that I ever purchased. I got the, it was a trio. It was the stretch concealer, the cloud paint, and the boy brow that. And that was my very first product that I bought from Glossier was that trio. And I've, I've stuck with them ever since. <laughs> The boy brow is the only brow product that I use consistently. If I run out, I'm getting a new one. I've tried to use other brow products in the past, but it's, I just keep coming back to this one. Now, I've also tried dupes for these products. I think that the e.l.f. Wow Brow, is that the name of it? Is It's similar, but it just doesn't do what boy brow does. I remember having to work so much harder with that product than I ever had to do with boy brow to get a similar effect. And then in the end, boy brow still stood out. Now this product, it's not going to give you perfectly precise eyebrows, but it is going to give you fluffy. It's gonna give you natural. It's gonna give you just enhanced version of yourself. And that's why I love it so much. I've been putting all my friends onto this for real. It's so easy to use. When you get a fresh boy brow, by the way, it's going to be very creamy. It does dry out a little bit the longer you have it, because again, makeup does expire. But when you first get it, I remember I was doing, I was at a rehearsal for a, uh, like a, a an intimate runway show when I was modeling. And I had just went, gone to the Glossier store and got this. And I was in the bathroom and I was trying out, it, it was a brand new tube of this, and I forgot how like intense it is when you first use it. So I went in the bathroom and I did my brows and I came out <laughs> and all I had was brown makeup on and the brows was given. I was there, I was model on the go, model on the job. It was given thick, it was given bushy, it was given I'm here to stay. So beware of that when you first open the tube, go and use a very, very, very gentle hand. Maybe start off like on the arch before you start when the in the very beginning of the brow so you can see how it applies. But then once you get used to it, you can like just do your brows like normal. Fantastic! Highly recommend. It is my favorite. Yeah. I think out of all the, well, maybe this and the cloud paints. Like those two. Favorite, favorite, favorite. I recommend to everyone. I love it. Okay, and speaking of cloud paints, next up we have the cloud paints. Now, this is a really subtle shade. This is Beam, and I've been using it for, like, pretty consistently for the last couple months. I've been obsessed with it because it's just cute. It's just natural. And, you know, it's cutesy. It's just a little bit of blush. I also think that this is a pretty good color for olive undertones for whatever reason. I think, like, the peachiness contrasting with the green, they, like, complement each other in a way. They have this in a lot of different shades, and I think that this is the most versatile product that is in their entire line. Regardless of skin tone, skin type too, and even finish, because you can just set over this if you wanna kind of matte it down, but it's also not super dewy. Like this is just for my skin, this is not from the product itself. It's not dewy enough where it would maybe turn off someone who doesn't like a dewy finish. It's just very natural, and it's available in so many different colors, like, and, my friend Carlos, shout out to my boy Carlos. <laughs> he also brought up a good point when I was talking to him about this makeup. Like it can be used for multi-purpose use. So it's not just, it's not just a blush. You can use this on the lips. You can use this as an eyeshadow. You can use them for whatever your heart desires, you know? Like if y'all want to get anything from Glossier, I'm telling you like these two, I really do think, cause this one, I love it, but I do think it's gonna be better suited for someone who has more of a dry skin type and likes the dewy look. But these two, universal for anyone. Wait, and the third one, and the fourth one. Hold on, there's there's two more, there's two more products. Like, amazing. I've been talking about them for years for a reason. They're fantastic. There's a shade out there for everyone. It's so beginner friendly too, which I really, really like. 
it's not complicated i also really like that with glossier makeup products you can use your hands to pretty much apply everything so it's really great on the go makeup and i want to say that they have these two products in a trio as well with the ultra lip yes this is the ultra lip in the shade villa which is a cute like a dusty rose kind of it's it's close to depending on your skin tone it's close to like a natural lip shade personally my favorite shade is trench which is described as a toffee brown oh my gosh like i just think on medium tan complexions it looks gorgeous and if you do have a deeper skin tone they have cachet which is a really nice natural brown color on the lips and they also have ember which is more of like a, a plum reddish but i think cachet is gonna look like beautiful on deeper skin tones it's a lip shine is what it calls itself and it's somewhere between like it's like a glossy lipstick yeah it's a sheer wash of color but the color is there and then the last product too now that i've been using it like i don't want to use another clear lip gloss and i've tried the other clear lip glosses out there some really popular ones but i think this one is better because it's not sticky this is the lip gloss in clear it does what it's supposed to do it's long lasting and it's not sticky it's really really comfortable on the lip shoot let me reapply some as long as we're here mm. <laughs> mm. and it just like enhances it just judges the look you know it's doing what i asked it to do no complications is simple i mean what more could you ask from a lip gloss but for it to be there for it to stay for it to not be sticky and for it to shine and it does that very simply now there was one product that i accidentally skipped generation g the matte lipstick i know i have it i think i've used it once maybe or maybe i never tried it so i guess i just don't really have an opinion on it if you want like if you were looking for that product specifically in a review i can try to find the one that i have and i can make like a little short of it which will be a continuation of the does glossy actually do anything series but yeah i apologize that wasn't in this video i just like forgot <laughs> if you want to know my thoughts on the body products as well i could like make a little short reviewing that but yeah those are the products that are available at sephora right now that you could purchase i think it's fantastic that glossier is finally more accessible to people especially for them to test out their shades and and find a good match for them in stores before they you know commit to making a purchase online and are just kind of trying anything a little tip though what i would suggest if you just want to be a smart shopper go to sephora test out the products find out what you like and then get them from the glossier website if it's your first purchase you do get like 10 percent off but they also have sets so if you're looking to buy multiple products maybe check for a set first to see if you can get a discount on them so you're not paying full price because you're not going to get a discount at sephora unless it's like a sephora specific sale you know but yeah this is my updated glossier review view of every product I've ever tried. <laughs> <laughs> still like their water bottle use this every single day <laughs> the hand cream it stays in my jacket my coat pocket all throughout the winter i'm always reapplying it along with the bomb.com which is like sad that they reformulated but but i'm sure you know some people are excited about the reformulation as well <sighs> that was a lot of talking but thank you so much for sticking with me if you did i really do hope that you found this video helpful in some type of way and let me know what future skincare content you want to see because we will be getting back to talking about skin <laughs> I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all. Stay safe. <laughs>